Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm so thankful that you are here. So we're going to continue on with math word problems. And I love word problems because they really give a math problem a meaning or a purpose, okay? It's not just random numbers that some mathematician or some teacher threw together. There's meaning behind it. And I want you to shift your brain and think about it like that too. If you're new here, welcome. Definitely hit that subscribe button so you can check out all my videos. Now, before we get into the actual problems, let's just do a quick review about what inequality means. So when we hear the word inequality, we know that equality means equal, right? But we're not talking about equal, we're talking about is not equal or inequality. So we're going to have signs that look like this, okay? So the first one, we have x is less than let's say two, okay? So I know that x, it could be maybe one, or it could be zero, or it could be negative one, uh, depending upon what we're looking at, right? Whether it goes negative or not. But my x is less than two. And this is a really silly way to remember things, but you may have learned this in grade school. I learned it in grade school. It's the way I teach it, and my students want me to always draw the shark teeth, okay? So here we have ah, little shark teeth, or it could be like an alligator, but the alligator really wants to eat. What's the bigger thing, right? So the two is bigger, so the alligator wants to eat that two because it is bigger and the alligator's really hungry, okay? So something really silly, but if it makes it stick in your brain, do it, okay? Now I'm going to say X is greater than, let's say, four. So again, shark teeth if you want, or alligator teeth, Rah! And so my X is going to be bigger than four, not less than four. So maybe it's five or six or 10 or 40, who knows? All we know is that the X is bigger than four. Now, if there's a line underneath it, so I'm gonna put a line right underneath the X is less than or equal to two, okay? So now my x is, maybe it could be two, right? Maybe it could be equal to two or else it's less than two. And we can draw a line under the other one here. So we have x is greater than or equal to four. Okay, friends, let's get on to those problems. Emily has saved $80 from her job. She wants to buy as many books for her collection at $7 each and posters at $6 each, as she can without spending all of her money. The inequality represents her spending, where X is the number of books and Y is the number of posters. 7X plus 6Y is less than or equal to 80. Which ordered pair, X, Y, represents a combination of books and posters Emily can buy? All right, so let's take a look here at our equation. So I have seven X, and so remember seven comes from right here, this $7, that's how much the books are, right? So seven X, X would be how many books she's buying, plus six Y, and the six Y, those would be those six posters, or the $6 posters, so every poster is $6, so that Y represents how many posters she has, okay? So really what we've got to do is we've got to take this just one step at a time and, and just it's a plug and play game, okay? So I'm going to rewrite this for the first one. So I have seven and now I'm going to put in this eight right here in letter A. So seven times eight plus six times Y, which is 10, that number needs to be less than 80. So I just multiply, right? Seven times eight. I always like to think about five, six, seven, eight. And that means seven times eight is 56, okay? So I have 56 plus six times 10 is 60. And all of that is less than 80. Oh, no, it's not. If you add 56 and 60, you're going to get 116, right? Is that less? than 80? No, no, it's not. So A is out of the question. Now let's try B. 
So we'll take the same equation, so I have 7 times 4 plus 6 times 6 is less than 80. All right, 7 times 4. What I like to think about is I know that 7 times 2 is 14, and then I just double that, and that gets me 28. Uh, that's sometimes what goes through my mind if I have troubles remembering 7 times 4. So 28 plus 6 times 6 is 36 is less than 80. Okay, so I add those together and I get 64 is less than 80. Is that true? It is true, but it says here that she wants to buy as many as she can. So maybe the other ones are just a little bit closer. So I'm gonna put here a 64 right next to my B so that I remember that that one's 64. Okay, letter C, I have seven times five plus six times eight is less than 80. So seven times five, 35. And six times eight is 48. Add those up and we get, oh, so close, 83, but she's a little bit over, so that's not gonna work. And our last one, D. Let's see if it's a little bit closer to 80 than our B was. So I have seven times five plus six times seven is less than 80. Seven times five is 35, and six times seven is 42. Let's add those up, and what do we get? 77. Is 77 less than 80? Yes, it is. That means that D is the answer because it's a little bit closer to 80 than our 64 with B. So, D is the answer. Aiden has $90 for his gardening project. He wants to buy flower pots at $8 each and soil bags at $6 each. The inequality representing his spending is 8x plus 6y is less than or equal to 90, right? Because he can't, he can't buy it if he doesn't have the money. So which ordered pair, x, y, represents a combination of flowers, pots, flower pots, and soil bags? Aiden, not Olivia, maybe they're, maybe they're buying it together, right? Can buy. All right, so here we have our equation. So we have 8x plus 6y is less than or equal to 90, right? So he can go, or, or they, Aiden and Olivia, they can go all the way up to $90. They just can't go over because they don't have more. So I guess we're not accounting for taxes. Hmm. Okay, so I know that eight is going to be for the flower pots. So then six is going to be for the bags of soil. So I have, eight times, starting with letter A, 10. Now hold it right there. I know that eight times 10 is 80, right? So unless this one here is less than 10, or 10 or less, then I know it's not gonna be the answer. So I have six, six times six, I know is 36. So ah, A is definitely not the answer. It goes way over. So let's try B. So I have eight times five, which is 40. We're looking a little better now, right? <laughs> Plus six times 10 is 60. Uh-oh, friends. 40 plus 60, that's 100. That's over, they can't use that one. Okay, let's try C. So I have eight times eight, which is 64, plus six times seven is going to be 42. Again, we are over. This is 106. Guys, these are not working. Aiden and Olivia really need to figure this out before they go into the gardening store. Okay, and finally, D, let's hope it works. Fingers crossed. So we have eight times seven, which we know is 56, plus our six times five is going to be 30. My friends, looks like we're doing well, right? So I have 56 plus 30 is going to be 86, which is indeed less than 90. So that means our answer here is D. So they can buy seven 
flower pots, and six bags of potting soil. Next question here. Zoe has $200 for her clothing budget. She wants to buy pants, X, at $50 each, and shoes, Y, at $40 each. Each ordered pair, X, Y, represents a combination of pants and shoes Zoe can buy. All right, so where's the equation, right? There is no equation. That means we have to write our own equation, which is fine. We've got this, right? So let's take a look. She has $200. So here's the equation, $200. And I know that she has to buy less than or equal to $200, right? She could go right up to the $200, but she can't go over. So now we have, it says pants, which are $50. So I'm going to say 50X plus her shoes, which are 40, 40Y. So 50X plus 40Y is less than or equal to 200. That's our equation, we did it. So now let's see how much she can buy. So I have 50 times four, hold it right there. 50 times four is 200, right? So we don't even need to go further. We know that A is not the answer. You can't be buying four pairs of pants. Now look at B, right? There she's trying to buy five pairs of pants. So 50 times five, that's 250. That is over as well. So that it quickly eliminates B. Okay, C and D are looking a little bit better. So C, she has $50 for her pants times one pair of pants. So looking good so far. Plus 40 times three. So now I'm at 50 plus 40 times three. We know is 120. So now she's at 170. Could she do that? Absolutely, right? That would totally work with her budget. So C is 170. And let's take a look at D and see which one it is. Okay, so for D we have 50 times two plus 40 times one. So 50 times two is 100 plus 40 and she's at 140. So does that work? Yes, she's staying within budget, but with these types of questions, we're trying to get as close to that 200 as we can. So what is our answer, my friend? C at 170. So she can buy one pair of pants and three pairs of shoes. Friends, Zoe is spending too much money, in my opinion, on her pants and shoes. My favorite store to buy clothing online is called Thread Up. I'm not sponsored by them. ThreadUp is an online consignment store where you can buy your favorite brands secondhand or at consignment for a fraction of the cost, okay? So this is a company that I highly recommend that you shop at. I do have an affiliate link, and so if you click on my link down below, you'll receive 45% off. And so check it out, you know, if it's for you, fantastic. I, I certainly love it, and I know that I'm saving my money and I'm saving the environment. But let's get back to our math problems. <laughs> Ethan has $160 to spend on sports gear. He wants to buy basketballs, X, at $15 each, and jerseys, Y, at $20 each. Which ordered pair, X, Y, represents a combination of basketballs and jerseys Ethan can buy? Hmm, I wonder why he's buying so much. I think he must be a coach or something. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did with Zoe in the last question. So how much does he have? $160. And we know that he can't spend more than $160, so it's going to be less than or equal to $160. All right, his basketballs, $15, right? So I can put an X. Honestly, I'd probably even rather put a B for basketballs plus his jerseys, which are $20, and $20 times the Y. Now, I put these in parentheses, but you certainly don't have to, the way it's written. Okay, so let's try here, 15 times six plus 20 
times 6. And what do we get? We get 90 plus 120. And that's going way over. Sorry, Ethan, you can't, you can't buy that, right? That puts us at 210. Not going to work. The school is not going to appreciate you spending that much. Okay, so let's try B. We have 15 times 4 plus 20 times 5. And what do we get? 60 plus 100. Oh my goodness, we just hit the jackpot. We get 160. Ethan is right on target buying exactly what he needs to buy with four basketballs and five jerseys. Friends, we made it to the end of those four problems. I hope that you have a better understanding of word problems and also a better understanding of inequalities, especially with those couple twists there at the end. Friends, you are enough. I believe in you and make sure that you believe in yourself too because you can do math problems. You're going to pass that test. I just believe it. I know you will. So I will catch you in the next video and peace and God bless.